Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, here with some post-fight comments on Kelly Pavlik's second-round knockout of 15-2 and two Aaron Jacko. Now remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own, even for post-fight videos. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say, this weekend I have a video up, many disagree with it, um, in which I answer the question, is Arthur Abraham back? And my response is no, I thought he lost his fight, even though media reports uh, have him winning the fight by a wide margin and the judges had him winning the fight by a wide margin. I would encourage everyone to look at the actual fight, which should be up on YouTube shortly. Now let's talk about Kelly Pavlik. Is Kelly Pavlik back? Perhaps. Jury is still out. Right, let's talk about it. First, Aaron Jacko. I know he's 15 and 2. Here's what you need to know. This fight against Kelly Pavlik was only his second fight since... 2006. Do the math. Let me point out that just four fights ago, Jacko was stopped, I mean KO'd, by a fighter who had seven wins, 13 losses, and five draws. Let me also say that the one guy he fought since 2006 had a record going into the fight of 10 wins, 9 losses, and 2 draws. Right? If you didn't hear about Aaron Jacko before this fight, it's because Aaron Jacko's record doesn't indicate that he's world class. If Kelly Pavlik were a champion, Aaron Jacko would not qualify as a contender. Right, so let's understand that. Let me also say that Pavlik changed his corner. And for this fight, he had Robert Garcia, Antonio Margarito's trainer, as his trainer. And he actually looked like a different fighter. He had much better foot movement. Much better balance. He cut off the ring in a way that he did not in two losses. His loss to Bernard Hopkins and his loss to Sergio Martinez. In both of those fights, those guys were able to circle him and dance away. Yesterday, Aaron Jacko was not. Kelly Pavlik not only was moving well, Kelly Pavlik cut off the ring on Jacko and had Jacko back up against the ropes, cornered. Let me also say, too, that old Kelly Pavlik had a great jab. He would hit you with the jab. He's a tall fighter who fights long, right? It's very hard to get inside on Kelly Pavlik, and he would batter you with a long jab, right? His bread and butter was really his right hand. In this fight, I thought it was interesting because Kelly Pavlik starts to throw very hard left hooks. And how he does it is interesting. He actually starts to throw counter left hooks. He does it more than I've seen him in other fights. When he lands that left hook, unlike old Kelly Pavlik, who would jump in like he did against Edison Miranda and unload with a barrage and then make it a shootout. New Kelly Pavlik was more like Vladimir Klitschko against Ray Austin, right? He's throwing a very heavy left hook, but he's keeping himself protected. He's still maintaining distance and length, right? And so I thought he looked pretty good. The final KO punch was excellent where it looked like he did a pretty good head dodge. In other words, Kelly now 
is rolling a little bit better with punches. Looks like he does a little head dodge, then hits Jacko with a counter left hook, and Jacko is completely unprepared for it. And it's interesting, because if you look at the first round, you'll see that Pavlik figures out that the punch he can land is that left hook. And he plays off that left hook beautifully, right? Now, that's what I liked about Kelly Pavlik. Here are the open questions. Here's why I can't say he's back yet. In Pavlik's last fight, not this one, but the one before, he fought a fighter named Alfonso Gomez. Excuse me, Alfonso Lopez, right? And um, I thought in that fight, Pavlik's defensive reflexes had dimmed considerably. Boxing is a sport about reflexes. Guys like Ali at the end of the line said, you know, I could see the punches coming. I just couldn't react to them. Right. Uh, if your reflexes go, wow, you don't have a lot left. When you look at the older fighters who continue to be successful in the sport, you know, they still have pretty good reflexes. Bernard Hopkins still has pretty good reflexes. Vitaly Klitschko. When you throw and his hands are down, he's able to move his head out of the way, right? He's not standing there getting hit flush with shots. I thought Kelly Pavlik, in his last fight, was getting hit flush with shots by Alfonso Lopez, who himself is a limited fighter. Understand that since the Pavlik loss, Lopez has actually lost twice including once to a fighter with a 3-5-1 and one record who weighed 161 pounds in the fight. Understand, when Lopez fought Pavlik, they were both up around 170, right? 169, 170. Lopez lost to a guy with a losing record, limited experience, who he actually outweighed by several pounds. I believe Lopez in that fight was 165 pounds. So the fact that a guy who, you know, isn't championship level, at least not now in his career, was able to hit Pavlik so many times that that decision was a majority decision. It wasn't a unanimous decision, right? One judge actually believed the fight was a draw. Tells you that Pavlik's defense and his reflexes are a cause for concern. Now, against a fighter who, as I make this video, right, has only had two fights since 2006, Pavlik wasn't sufficiently tested to see if his reflexes were back, right? Without the reflexes, understand a fighter is a shot fighter, right? That's what makes a fighter a shot fighter. When they lose their reflexes, when they can no longer be themselves, Pavlik in this fight wasn't tested enough for us to see if he can actually quickly move out of the way and do so on a sustained basis. I think the jury's still out on Kelly Pavlik's defensive reflexes. Let me also point out, too, that this fight was fought at around 170 pounds. If you're going to gauge Kelly Pavlik, you need to gauge him against either the super middleweight division, guys like Carl Frotch, Lucien Boutte, Andre Ward, right, that group, or the light heavyweight division, right, we're talking Chad Dawson, Bernard Hopkins, Nathan Cleverly, Tavares Cloud, right, and so... It'll be interesting because I still am a skeptic, even though Kelly moved well, on whether Kelly can handle guys with good movement, like Lucien Boutte, who moves and who can jump in and hurt you, just like Sergio Martinez hurt and beat Kelly Pavlik. Right? I'm also a skeptic on whether a Kelly Pavlik can hang with an Andre Ward, who's one of the sport's best pound-for-pound, 
who is a master of several styles and who can, if he needs to, stay outside and move, force Kelly Pavlik to move, that's when Pavlik has gotten in trouble. Just look at the Bernard Hopkins fight where Hopkins is circling Pavlik, doesn't allow Pavlik to set his feet, and then is systematically outworking Kelly Pavlik, right? At light heavy, it gets interesting. Because at light heavy, I believe you have a couple of champions. Let's call it as it is, right? This is a gambling site. This is not a promoter site or a political site. Let's just call it as it is. You have a couple of champions at 175, who seem to be somewhat limited from a boxing sense, right? Tavares Cloud, I thought, got completely deconstructed by Gabriel Campillo, right? Cloud's forte is to throw very hard, very short punches. Against a guy who can fight long, like Kelly Pavlik, who can hide himself behind a long left hand, whether that hand is a jab or a quick hook, Right? It's an open question on whether Tavares Cloud gets close enough to Kelly Pavlik to do damage. Right? I mean, oddly enough, Kelly Pavlik might actually be able to outbox Tavares Cloud. Right? Let me point out, though, that Pavlik was down against Jermaine Taylor, and Cloud's calling card is punching power. So if Cloud's able to get inside on Pavlik and hurt Pavlik, that fight might be over. Understand, Kelly's big for a middleweight, right? He's now fighting between super middle and light heavy. But Kelly initially came up as a middleweight. He was big for middleweight. He's not big for a light heavyweight. The other champion who I think Kelly could deconstruct, although... Bernard Hopkins might get there first, is Nathan Cleverly. Cleverly likes to trade punches. But Cleverly, even at 175, doesn't have the punching power that Kelly Pavlik has. Understand, Kelly Pavlik is a very hard puncher. Right? So if a fighter like Nathan Cleverly wants to stay in the pocket against a long bomber like Kelly Pavlik, especially a guy like Pavlik who just knocked out Aaron Jacko with the left hook from distance. I think that's begging for trouble, right? I think that's begging for trouble, right? Let me also say this too. There's some other questions about Kelly Pavlik. He still looks stiff, right? He stands upright. You don't really see him bending too much at the waist. It's unclear whether Pavlik can handle an opponent who's able to fight low. Understand, fighters have power zones, right? Kelly Pavlik strikes me as a guy who can throw great power up top. I don't know if Kelly Pavlik has the kind of power to deal with an opponent who's able to bend low and not give him... <clears throat> the angles at which he can generate leverage. So Kelly Pavlik remains a work in progress. Beating a guy who's only fought once in several years uh, against a fighter who was 10, 9, and 2 doesn't really tell me that much, right? Kelly Pavlik's chin, that's an open question. Kelly Pavlik against a slick fighter, that's an open question. I take Chad Dawson right now and Bernard Hopkins over Kelly Pavlik. In fact, longtime viewers know I took Hopkins over Pavlik the first time they fought. Right? Pavlik against Carl Frotch, that's a fascinating fight. But again, understand Carl Frotch hits hard for 168 pounds. And Carl Frotch has certain things in his arsenal that I'm not sure if Kelly Pavlik does. For one, Frotch throws a great uppercut from halfway across the ring, right? The other problem is Carl Frotch, when he wants, can lower his shoulder and throw excruciating body punches, right? 
I think Carl Frotch, too, and this might be controversial, is a better athlete than Kelly Pavlik. Nonetheless, I think a Pavlik-Carl Frotch matchup would be great, right? I think Butte, I think Ward moved too well for Kelly Pavlik. In any event, jury's still out on Kelly Pavlik. He remains an intriguing fighter. He did look good against Aaron Jacko. For those who want to see the fight, I have it posted on my YouTube channel page. Thanks for watching.